I work in applied behavioral economics, essentially understanding the psychology of why people buy. This is going to be a reverse interview. So Melina is going to be interviewing me, asking all of the questions from her students. So it's a three part framework for having difficult conversations. So step one is acknowledge and validate the emotions. Then we're going to stop and get curious with compassion. Then lastly, we are going to utilize joint problem solving. Hello, my friend, and welcome to our YouTube page. My name is Kwame Christian. I'm the founder and CEO of the American Negotiation Institute and the host of the number one negotiation podcast in the world, Negotiate Anything. And this is one of our favorite clips from one of our favorite episodes of the podcast. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you can be the first to know when we create new content like this. And let's keep the conversation going in the comments too, because we want to create a community of like-minded people who are learning and growing together. And if you want access to the full clip, make sure to check out Negotiate Anything Premium. Links to that in the comments. And without further ado, let's jump into the interview. I realized something, Melina, it was last year that I realized this. I was thinking to myself, when it comes to the media type of deals that we've been able to strike, I feel like we've been punching above our weight. Mm. And I'm like, why is it? Maybe I'm, am I just getting lucky with these types of things? And then I <laughs> sometimes the most obvious thing is the hardest thing to appreciate. And I realize the reason I'm getting better deals than I should is because I'm negotiating these deals, <laughs> right? The, we've had two network deals. We're on, we had, we're on Acast. And that was at a time where it was still relatively small, but I believe they had PBS NewsHour and the BBC on Acast. It's a network out of Sweden. They're big. And then we're able to parlay that to the relationship with the LinkedIn podcast network. And so again, that was massive for us. And so that was a, a really unique deal because it wasn't just the, the money coming from being on the network, from monetizing and listening to those ads. Don't skip those ads, people. We can see. <laughs> That's how we get paid. We so love an ad. That, that was part of it. But with that deal, we were able to also get a content manager. So every week I'm meeting with somebody teaching me about the LinkedIn algorithm. We're able to er understand different uh, strategies. We're able to collaborate and to have these opportunities to be on the CEO of LinkedIn's podcast and these type of unique opportunities. Same with Forbes right? It was the negotiations from the relationships that I created, negotiating my way through the company, and then was landing the deal. Now we write for Forbes, same with Audible. And so really, when it comes down to these opportunities that we've gotten over the course of the years, our ability to negotiate and advocate for ourselves were really was the, the quintessential element to our success, because we wouldn't be able to have these opportunities if we weren't negotiating for them. And I've been able to have a lot more confidence in shooting these shots, because I know that if I can at least get in the conversation, I can communicate the value in a way that's mutually beneficial. And even though it might not seem obvious to the person on the other side, where the opportunity is, I can use these negotiation skills to find that opportunity and close deals. So I don't think we would be where we are today if we weren't really good at what we did. Yeah. I think that really ties in actually to the next question here, which is asking, says, would love to ask Kwame whether or not he has had experience with or can see how this framework could be applied in a sales conversation or even in marketing, <laughs> which it could just be yeah. like, see above. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's funny because the, you, I'm surprised you didn't mention anything about the fact that I am very red today. You are right? yeah. <laughs> red. So for people who are on the listening on the podcast, red turtleneck and then i changed my led background to red and yes i am a buckeye but that's not the reason it's because we closed coca-cola so they're a client now and <gasps> yeah it's their sales team that's going to be our, our clients the answer is yes <laughs> we work with sales teams but i think it's really important to understand how negotiation fits into sales and i'm really clear with this about this with the clients because you need to have a sales expert to understand that sales is a process Sales is a process. It's a discipline. So there's a methodology to having this. But within the conversations, the sales conversations, you sprinkle in the negotiation techniques. So you're negotiating within the sales process. So that's where those the skills are complementary, but also distinct. And so when it comes to the end of the process, you might have gone through the process of doing a great job of generating interest. Now, toward the end of the process, this is where the negotiation really comes into play, because now we're talking about 
not whether or not you want it through the sales process. We know that you want what I have to offer. Now we're negotiating to figure out what are the details of the deal that actually get us across the finish line. That's where the negotiation comes into play. And so when you're able to not only know how to negotiate, but also know how the negotiation fits in within a, a really robust sales process, it's that synergy of those two skill sets that leads to the best deals. Well, and this brings us back kind of full circle to the person who asked the first question I asked had also asked, in a negotiation, you can choose to make the first offer or wait to hear the first offer. And the strategy used varies depending on the counterpart, the data asymmetry, among other factors. Do you ever prefer not to offer? This is a descriptor for emotion. So what do you think about offering first versus waiting when it comes to negotiation, and we can apply it to sales if it makes sense. But there is a bit of that like game of chicken that comes in there. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So first, let's just do a brief primer on anchoring, my favorite negotiation technique. Yay. And I've done an episode, just a solo episode, and I believe I came on your show. I was going to say you've anchoring. been, yeah. <laughs> Full been episode, like an hour, <laughs> just talking about <laughs> the psychology behind it. It's so powerful. So just very briefly, essentially anchoring within a, a negotiation is starting off the negotiation with the most aggressive request that you can reasonably justify. So you want to be able to substantiate what you're asking for with legitimate and objective criteria. So legitimate, it comes from a source that is respected. And then objective, it is not biased in my favor, most likely coming from a third party. Now, the benefit is psychologically, the if you're able to set a good anchor, it makes it more likely for the deal to settle closer to that anchor. And numerous studies have demonstrated the validity of this. And the thing is, even <laughs> the, the beautiful thing about anchoring is that even if you're asked specifically if the anchor was effective, you don't understand how effective it was, right? So I'll give an example. So they did a study with real estate agents, and I'm just going to come up with arbitrary numbers because I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. So let's say they have these experienced real estate agents come and look at a house. It's the same house, but mm -hmm. in the different experimental uh, conditions, what they did is they said this house is worth, the list price was 500000 versus 550,000 versus 600,000. And so then after they, the realtors went in and evaluated the house, they said, okay, what do you think the true market value is of this house, considering the comps and everything like that? And not surprisingly, the group that was primed with that anchor of 500 was lower than 550. 550 was lower than 600. Then after the fact, if you ask them, hey, did the list price have an effect on you? They said, no, I'm smart. Of course not. <laughs> So anchoring is really powerful. Now, anchoring doesn't work if you have a, a, like a completely illegitimate anchor. <laughs> so if you say, hey, this house is worth $7 billion, they'll say, I'll, I'll pass because you clearly have problems. So you have to do it within a reason. So now back to the original question. If I have an opportunity to drop an anchor, I will always drop that anchor. When it comes to who makes the first offer, there is only one consideration, one variable other than if an industry standard might dictate that it comes from one person. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. If you want access to the full episode and bonus clips, make sure to check out Negotiate Anything Premium. Wait, are you negotiating with me? You say you want a free trial? You drive a hard bargain, but I will accept your offer. Click the link in the description for a free trial of Negotiate Anything Premium. I'll see you in there.